doon na kasi mamang si ma'am. Hindi niya gagawin yun. Pero, sorry mama, anong sana po yung DBM? Wala. Mr. Chair, natakot. <laughs> oh. Hindi talaga ang tatamaan itong DBM, sa totoo lang po, Mr. Chair. Nagsasabit pala kayo ng proposed budget ninyo para sa capital outlay. Hindi kayo magbibigay ng supporting documents. Anong klase kayo? Now, for the second time, sino sino nga lang? DBM o USA naman this time? Kahapon, I mean, kahapon, DBM versus the uh, OWA. Kung sino sino nga lang. Ngayon naman po, ma'am. Sino sino nga lang? DBM o USA naman? Thank you, Committee Secretary. Uh, we're honored and privileged to be joined by the uh, Chairman of the Co Committee on Energies, Senator uh, Rafi Tulfo. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Yes. And uh, before we continue, uh, let me ask our esteemed senators to have any opening statement. Uh, Senator Tulfo. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, during the last hearing, I think that was last month, September, and I was kind of disappointed in Singapore. Uh, nagtuturoan po yung iba't ibang uh, ahensya ng gobyerno because all I wanted to find out uh, sino ho talabang responsible dun sa perennial brownout na nangyari uh, nationwide and these are the complaints that flooded my uh, action centers and uh, when I was trying to uh, investigate by way of asking questions from the people present here during that hearing and all I got was finger pointing it was really very disappointing. And uh, eventually, I uh, was kind of happy na si uh, Secretary Lutilia um, did said something uh, na natuwa naman ako na he did agree with me na kailangan mag-usap-usap po lahat ng ancient gobyerno, huwag magtulungan, ay huwag magturuan, uh, magkaisa to uh, find a solution uh, to this problem. Uh, I would like to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, na kayo po... Uh, uh, sa ERC, sa DOE, sa NEA, uh, na pukor, mga ultimate, at you guys are the reflection of this administration. So anything you do will reflect to the administration and it will go to the president. So um, your success will be the success of the president. And... Uh, the success of the president will be the success of the administration. And the success of the administration is the victory of the Filipino people, the victory that the Filipino people deserve. So let's work together para matumukan na natin itong mga brownout. Sana po ito yung maging legacy natin sa taong bayan. Kasi kapag nag-fail po kayo, then it will equal to failure ang mag-fulfill din po yung administration. So, sasama po yung pangalan ah, ng administration. It will go down history na wala inutil tamad yung mga uh, uh, kaliperis ni Pangulong uh, Bongbo Marcos. Uh, walang nagawa yung administration ni Bongbo Marcos. Sana wag ko ganun. Sana po uh, pagkatapos ng administration nito ni PBBM, pupuli po ang ating mapakinggan. Having said that, I'm here to help you, to support you uh, bilang po ng uh, committee chair ng energy, I'll do everything in my power to help you. Kung ano po yung pwede kong may tulong. Uh, if it needs legislation, just let me know. Uh, just tell me uh, what is it that you want, and I uh, will talk to uh, my legal uh, team uh, and some stakeholders para pag-usapan how we can craft uh, legislation that will tailor fruit doon po sa pangilangan nyo para masolve po yung problema at hand. So, ganun po uh, for now. Please, 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 wala na po sana finger pointing at magtulungan na po tayo. And, and I commend Senate uh, Secretary Rafael Lutilla nung last time we were here at uh, very willing siya na pausapin lahat para masolve itong problema ito. Thank you, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Chair, thank you po. Thank you, uh, Senator Tulfo. Um, Senator Tulfo is a known champion of the consumers and uh, has been championing the welfare of our constituents now, the consumers, and we're quite uh, um, blessed that uh, uh, Senator Tulfo has direct access to our consumers through his platform. So, hindi lang po dadating sa ERC o DOE yung complaint, pati sa kanya dumadating na ho yung complaint. So, I think it's, uh, it's a good way of reaching out to our consumers to know exactly what they are experiencing on the ground. So, uh, thank you for that opening statement. Kasi nga po, ulitin ko, ano, yung ngayon po nakapakinig dito, 
Mahalaga po ang ginagamba ng papel ng ESA kung tutusin. Kasi po sila yung nag-regulate ito mga uh, energy uh, sector ng tulad ng nasa NGCP, Meral Collective Cooperative. Eh kapag tulad po sila sa budget, eh there's the tendency na ito mga mabagit kong mga malaking uh, agency, eh mga mga ito, sila nang sasagot sa mga kakulangan dyan sa ERC. Sila ang pupuno. Sila ang bibili ng mga equipment. Magbubulunti sila. At kasi mga si ma'am, hindi nyo gagawin yun. Pero, sorry ma'am ha. No, I know you're not do that. Pero, come on ma'am. Uh, I've been, I've been in uh, broadcasting and listening to different complaints from different people from all sectors. Uh, 24 years to be exact. Alam ko na po halos lahat ng problema ng mga Pilipino. Napakinggan ko na po lahat ng klaseng katiwalian. You may say no, of course, I'll take it. Pero usually, nangyari, ganun po talaga na yung pagkukulang sa isang ahensya na pupunan ng mga or, or grupo na supposed to be niregulate o uh, inimbestigahan ng ahensyang yon. So sila magpupuno. So therefore, yung ahensyang pinunuan nila ng pangailangan, eh, magiging friendship na hindi na nagagawa ng kagandang trabaho. Ina-example nga ako sa polis, di ba? Nung may crackdown yun sa illegal gambling. Yung polis na atasan para tugisin yung mga uh, gambling lord. E kaso, kulang nga po sa budget yung polis. Kulang sa operation sa budget. Parang, parang capital outlay kung tutusin sa inyong katumbas. Hindi po nabibigyan. So, ano nangyari? E di yung mga gambling lord yung bibigay yung mga kagamitan sa PNP. So, hindi na po pwede mahuli ang PNP kasi puro gambling lord yung nagpo-provide sa kanilang mga pangilangan. Same thing here sa, sa DMW at sa DC. Anong sana po yung ang DBM? Wala. Mr. Chair, natakot. Oh, hindi talaga ang tatamaan itong DBM sa totoo lang po, Mr. Chair. Hindi magpakita. Ngayon, sasabihin nyo ng uh, DBM. Sasabihin nyo ng DBM, may savings kayo eh. Oh, ba't hindi nyo gamit yung savings nyo? Meron ba kayong savings? Wala po. Wala rin. Wala din po kasi nire-remit naman yun. Nire-remit niyo pala. Okay. Hello, DBM. Hi. Hi, hello. Ay, teka muna. Hello. Nadyan. Hello uh, po. Okay. Pwede bang ano, uh, asa na si James? Sino si James? Ay, ay sorry. Sino, sino si James po? James Ban? <laughs> teka muna. Nakalain naka, naka na ba tayo? Naka-una na. Opo, nakalain na po kayo. Ay, opo. Ay, sorry po. Uh, good afternoon po. Ay, good morning po, sir. Si, ano, sa DBM po to, sa Budget and Management Bureau E. With Apo. regard po dun sa capital outlay ng ERC. Uh, Apo. During the, ano po, during the uh, review and evaluation po ng kanilang budget, wala po kasing mga supporting documents. Kaya po, Okay, stop right there. Okay, I've heard that, I've heard that already before. Okay, walang supporting documents. Sandal lang po. ESC, pakisagot. Nagsasabit pala kayo ng proposed budget ninyo para sa capital outlay. Hindi kayo magbibigay ng supporting documents. Anong klase kayo? Sige. Uh, good, good morning again, uh, Your Honors. We submitted all our documents to the DBM po. Kasi doon sa aming CO, uh, there are four components. Uh, that's the ICT equipment, the technical and scientific and office equipment, including the transportation po. Kaya nagsabit po kayo ng dokumento? DBM, nagsabit po lang mga dokumento. Um, to support yun sa kanilang uh, proposal, uh, proposed budget, pa sa kapag outlay. Um, sir, kasi uh, as a matter of policy po, uh, halimbawa po sa ICT equipment, kailangan po yun, may ISSP um, uh, approved ng DICT unang-una. Uh, in the previous years naman po, nagpo-provide naman po yung DBM. Hindi po siya supported noon. Tapos... So, hindi po nag... Yes, hindi po nag... Supporting sorry. documents. Go ahead po, Madam. Go ahead po, Madam. Ay, sorry po. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, okay na po. Secondly po, yun din po sa transportation, kung meron po silang request, uh, kailangan din po namin ng inventory plus repeating program. Kailangan po na meron pong um, repeating program and inventory na dapat ano, seven years po yung ano, before natin ma-replace yung 
Uh, we submitted, uh, Your Honor, kaya lang uh, as uh, mentioned by the DBM, ang sabi nga nila po, uh, it requires particularly for the ICT uh, equipment po, it requires the approval pa of the ICT. Kaya hindi rin po sila nag, uh, nagbigay ng budget. But for the Okay, so makasingi dyan. So ang point po yung dito, ang ganun pala, uh, DBM, at may mga kulang na dokumento, meron silang mga requirements pa na i-fulfill. At least you should have the courtesy na to inform them kung ano mga kulang dokumento para makapag-comply sila. Hindi po ba, DBM? Ah. Give them the chance yes. na para to comply. Kung hindi nila kaya i-comply, then they would say na, okay, wala kami, better luck next time. Next year na lang po kami yung comply So for now, wala muna kami kapitulat dahil talagang hindi pa lang namin nasunod yung requirements. Dapat lang namin na-informahan nyo. Yung kayo magkakat na lang, mag-slash without letting uh, the, the agency na pinuputulan nyo ng capital outlay without giving them a chance na to explain. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Noted po. Uh, however, uh, while it was already provided po in our budget call, our analysts also communicated with the budget division regarding dun sa mga requirements and wala wala meron ma'am okay now for the second time sino sino wala ng DBM o sino naman this time kahapon I mean kahapon DBM versus the uh, OWA kung sino sino wala ng ganyan naman po ma'am sino sino wala ng DBM o sino naman sige magturuan naman ulit Napipiko na po kayo ako sa mga ahinsya ng gobyerno na sinungaling. Saan sinungaling ka mag-anak ng kalapan? Kaya siguro nagkalukulukan yung mga pinali, yung mga laptop. Dahil maraming kalapan dyan. Ang sinungaling equals kalapan. Pero yung sa budget ninyo sa DBM, ang late lang yung slash nyo. Pero sa ibang ahinsya, na may importante, ang malaking kinatyo, almost half percent. But anyway, ma'am, ito na lang po, mapaiksi tayo. Madam, you don't, wala ko kayong kasalanan na mga Director Gemma, sorry po, baka hindi po talaga kayo ang taong uh, kausap dito, I'm sorry. Pero next time, ma'am, you should have the courtesy and decency at least man lang na binay po kayo ng proposed budget na isang ahensya. Give them a chance to explain, to justify. Kung kailangan po ng dokumento, mag-produce ng additional documents, tingnan kung kaya pa. Hindi na kaya makapag-produce yun. E din, ma'am, may reason kayo na para talagang huwag bigyan ng budget. Give them a chance, okay? Huwag yung puputulin nyo tapos wala lang, gusto nyo puputulin. And then, balik kami ngayon, sabihin nyo, i-inform nyo sila, sabi nila, hindi raw, okay? Doon na po na lang, pakisabi lang po sa mga kasamahan nyo, okay? Yes, sir, noted po. Thank you po. Noted, sir, salamat. Thank you po. Now, ERC, isa po kayo sa mga ahensya ng pangalaan yung nag-recreate niya po sa mga electric cooperative. Uh, at nung last hearing natin dito, nagtuturo nga po kayo at buti na lang, sabi ni Secretary Tilia, eh, mag-usap-usap kayo. And uh, I'm sure na nag-usap-usap na kayo. And then uh, after that meeting, I've been talking to a lot of uh, experts sa energy sector. Uh, dahil nga po dun sa problema ng brownout, perennial brownout, that's been happening nationwide. Um, wala na pong katapusan. At uh, napagalaman ko po sa pag-usap ko po uh, sa mga energy experts. Um, mukhang ang pinaka-main problem, issue talaga rito to is pera. Uh, maraming mga electric cooperative na kulang sa pera and poor performance. Um, yun po siguro ang sagot na para mapaganda yung uh, elektrisidad uh, sa ating bansa, especially po sa mga off-grid. Now, Secretary Lutilia, um, uh, isn't it para i-review siguro po yung pong kontrata ng mga non-performing uh, uh, ng mga electric cooperative, yung mga poor ang performance nila 
Tingnan kung papaano po natin uh, matulungan sila, matulungan ng gobyerno na para mapaganda po yung kanilang performance. Uh, so ayaw ko naman po na minta na doon, naaasa lang po sila sa uh, subsidy from the government. The reason why I said this is, ako po, base po sa pag-usap ko sa mga energy experts, pabura ko, and I think uh, Senator Agachalian is also uh, pabura dito na tingnan po natin, pag-aralan, na ma-privatize na lang po siguro itong uh, yung electric uh, cooperatives uh, maging uh, privatized na naman po siguro sila kasi pag privatized na po ito eh, meron pong budget may mga pera silang mailalabas okay bukod pa dyan maging maganda po yung governance may mga uh, hindi nagkakwatak-watak sila sila nag-aawayan siguro sa ngala ng salapi eh, hindi nila alam kung sino talaga ang dapat ang uh, maghahawak ng pera, et cetera, et cetera. So, ang bagay dito yung mga consumers, yung taong bayan. Now, uh, what do you think, uh, Secretary Lutilia? Ito po yung sa akin naman po, ano, base po sa akin pakipag-usap sa maraming uh, energy experts. Pag-aralan, uh, siguro, na ibang privatize itong mga electric uh, cooperatives. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Senator Tulfo. Uh, Ama o kayo dyan na dapat uh, 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 riripasuin natin ang uh, approach to the electric co-ops. We have to distinguish well, between those that are already in a position to graduate to uh, other structures and those that, are, that really still need a developmental organization. So it's a different approach if it is a, a, uh, a, uh, an area, a geographical area that truly needs some hand-holding still. And those that are already graduate to a, ready to graduate to a private uh, or corporate structure, as you indicated. <clears throat> These directions are already there in IPIRA that electric co-ops have a choice. One, to retain their existing structure as, as uh, electric co-ops under NEA. Second, to register as stock corporations under the Cooperative Development, uh, uh, De Development Administration, or CDA. And then third, co to corporatize. Actually, uh, uh, Senator, you, you raised an important point. The decision is to actually to be made by the members of the electric co-op. So by, a, by a, a certain number of votes of the members of the co-op, they can choose to restructure okay. their organization. And if they uh, truly feel that they, are, they, that they can be better off with a corporate structure, they can actually vote to do so. And since they have assets, the existing electric co-ops have assets. They have lines, they have uh, uh, stations, and so on. They can actually, in fact, sell the assets to a private corporation. And some co-ops, the better performing ones, can even get terms on their investments as, as co-op members. Now, on the immediate, however, problems about uh, restructuring their power supply agreements, uh, the Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, Chair Di Malanta and the other members of the, of the ERC have uh, actually decided to take on a proactive stand, which is to help the electric co-ops individually. And while there are 121 of them, at least mm. to prioritize those that need to restructure their power supply agreements because a number of them are not really uh, capacitated to make uh, good or sound decisions. Some are over-contracted. And so these uh, additional burdens are actually passed on to the Consumer. consumers. So uh, uh, ERC Chair Di Malanta can expound a bit on, on what they are doing. That the, this is what they call the the caravans. PSA caravans. PSA caravans. And Mr. Chairman, if you have uh, 
Just what one minute, this? sir. Um, because we have been receiving complaints and uh, letters request from various electric cooperatives and also local government units um, on what to do with the high with the high prices all over the country. Most of us maybe here in Metro Manila we just focus on on Meralco because that's our our main provider. But all over the country the prices have really been staggering. So what we in the commission have agreed to do is to go by region and. Um, really go to where the problems are and not wait for not wait for uh for cases to arise so we'll review their uh, power supply agreements and find ways in their power supply agreements to one immediately if possible reduce their rates if that's not possible are there ways in their power supply agreements that will afford some relief maybe lower a capacity if it's a high if it's a high priced uh, contract can we lower the capacity so they can source to lower they can source from lower priced uh, suppliers so there are various ways but it's no similar to the electric cooperatives um, structure that Sec Popo had mentioned it's not a one size fits all will need to review their contracts to see what remedies are available in their contracts. So there are five commissioners will just spread ourselves um, so that we can we can cover as much ground as possible. Ito yung problema, Mr. Chair, no? yung pag nakausap ko rin yung mga consumers sa iba't ibang probinsya na palagi po nakaranas ng brownout ng performance ng kanilang electric cooperative at napakamahal po ng singil. Kung minsan wala na nga sila tatanggap ng, ng kuryente at palaging brownout, ayun pa yung dinibayaran nila. There are times mahal pa. And so when we talk to these electric cooperatives, so itinuturo nila sa napokor na dahil hindi na mabigay yung kanilang subsidy, hindi na sila nabayaran. Yung napokor, tuturo na naman uh, sa ERC, DOE. So, nagtuturoan talaga. So, like I said earlier, nung sa opening statement ko, dapat istap na natin pagtuturoan. Dapat uh, magtutulungan po lahat ng ensya ng gobyerno para masolve itong problema lahat itong sa brownout. Kasi, ito talaga main concern ko. For so many years na po, sa programa ko sa Mantel sa radyo, na daily basis, ito po talaga naklamo. So, besides mindang, especially sa mga off-grade, parang wala na po katapusan ng problema. Pero nung isinalang po natin dito yan, uh, Mr. Chair, yung sa first hearing ko, uh, medyo na-stop. Kaya ko, paano nyo gawa ng paraan? Pero after, natakot siguro. So, ninyas ko gun. After a couple of weeks, balik na naman sa problema. So, but we want a, a permanent solution. Huwag yung bang aid solution lang. Pakitang tao para makitang may ginawa, umaksyon, and then balik ulit. So, we have to do something about this brownout. Now, Secretary Rutilia, para sa iyo, uh, anong sa tingin mo talaga ang pinakasolusyon para matigil na po itong mga brownout nito once and for all that has been happening for, for years and years and decades now? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, Senator, your uh, concern is especially for the off-grid is a concern that we share with with you. Um, so first, uh, that's why we want National Power Corporation to uh, to <clears throat> make sure that we introduce more indigenous sources of power, particularly renewable energy, mm -hmm. to bring down the cost of power in the off-grid areas. Uh, so. Uh, the the new national power corporation uh, president has been tasked to come out with 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 those second is to improve the transmission system in the different off grid areas now transmission in the off grid is a state responsibility and therefore national power corporation is the one that uh, has to enter into primarily public-private partnerships in order to improve those as well as the, the uh, power supply. We have to revisit the, the incentives uh, for introducing hybrids. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the right now, some of the uh, existing new uh, power providers in the islands have no incentive to introduce uh, renewable energy because they it does not uh, benefit them in any way through reduction for example in uh, uh, of the rates they, they do not share anything by lowering it so we have 
have to develop this uh, these approaches. We are talking about RE. Sorry to interrupt, yes. Secretary. Yes. Nabagyo yes. kanina earlier yung offshore wind power at napaganda po nito. Dahil maraming tayong karagatan dito at uh, napaikutan tayo ng mga karagatan. Uh, nasa ano po yung development stage natin? Well, we Senator, we had, we, had to start, we had to start by uh, getting the, the Department of Justice opinion that renewable energy is open to 100% foreign ownership because the cost, the capital cost of introducing that technology is also very high. So we need investors for that. Second, uh, we have increased the uh, the uh, renewable energy uh, renew renewable energy portfolio standards from 1% to 2.52%. That means that distribution utilities would have to increase their their uh, renewable energy component. So that uh, that is also an additional uh, incentive. Then third, we have uh, just uh, inc uh, what is this? Classified the renewable energy as uh, per priority dispatch, and this was this will also help. But uh, the offshore wind will take some time, uh, Mr. Senator, because of. Uh, Precisely, they, they, they need studies on the, the wind patterns and the capacity and so on. But it is a, uh, a vision that we want to be able to, to implement uh, as fast as we can. But there are others. So even the so solar, solar projects, for example, because of these incentives can be introduced into, into uh, especially the offshore which I just, I just wanted to highlight another uh, thing that we were able to get. The Department of Justice has issued the opinion that National Power Corporation may now incur loans. And that okay. is important because if we are going to fund the upgrading of the transmission lines in the, in the island grids with under the jurisdiction of NPC, then we must be willing to invest state uh, resources into this. Okay. So these are some of the things, um, uh, Mr. Senator. And in, in Mindoro in particular, as you know, the Transco will act already a systems operator in the island. Okay. And we were able to, uh, with ERC's help, get that 10 megawatt uh, Good. Uh, plant permits going. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Dalawa naman, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll be very fully supportive sa inyo pong budget request, proposed budget ninyo. Pero, may kapalit po yan. Dapat, mag-perform po tayo. And we, if we're talking about performance, first things first. Dito po talaga sa Blano, na matagal na po yung uh, problema. So, with this present situation, present setup, ano po yung immediate solution na pwede pong maibigay ninyo uh, para... Hindi man siguro totally, at least mabawasan man lang kasi naiintindihan ko, marami namang factors yan kung bakit talagang uh, palagi nagkakabrown at naiintindihan ko na ngayon. Kasi nandito na po ako at uh, marami na po ako nakakausap, mga tulad ninyo at mga energy experts. So, given the present situation, what can you guys do na para at least ma-minimize to the level na tolerable? Ngayon kasi in tolerable, marami talagang inisgalit, nagagalit eh. Tolerable level ito mga brown out special sa mga off grid kasi nagawa naman nila nung nanggalaiti ako dito nagawa nila paraan so magalaiti lang tayo paragi araw-araw para matigil lang tayo paano ba talaga I'm just joking pero Secretary or uh, Attorney Mona Lisa ano po nakikita niyong solusyon immediate solusyon uh, Mr. Senator as far as rates are concerned they really uh, since uh, 50, more than 50% of our fuel in terms of coal and diesel, for example, for the off-grid areas, are imported and are subject to the variabilities of uh, the international market, then there is only a limited, uh, we have a limited, uh, uh, what is this, range of actions that we can do in order to, to uh, soften the impact 
on the consumers. Pero hindi po natin pwedeng sisihin po yung Russia at saka Ukraine kasi hindi naman po sa Russia tayo kumukuha ng oil, di ba? Yes, uh, Mr. Senator, but it is a global market. Okay. And therefore, what happens in one part of the world affects also the price at the we are going to import. So it is something that we will have to make a choice. Do we want supply at the price that the uh, world market... Uh, okay. what Sige po, ganito, paiksin natin. Yun pong madaling maintindihan ng taong bayan. Uh, in layman's term, paano po masabi sa mga nakikinigay sa atin at ito po yung mapapanood ng napakarami mga kababayan natin na naka-experience ng brownout palagi. Isimplify pa nyo lang po inyong explanation. Ano po ang nakikita nyo yung immediate solution para matigil na po itong wala na itong alang katapusan at um, kalbaryo sa mga kababayan natin itong brownout na ito. Layman's term po ay yung yes. simple. Huwag tayong gumamit ng technical terms. Uh, yung masabi ko, yung sinabi ni Yusek uh, Fuentebella a while ago na yung pag-address natin ng mga problema ay hindi sa supply ngunit distribution utility din okay. at uh, kaya uh, nangangailangan na, na masu, ma, masuri natin kung ano itong mga problema kasi iba, ibang problema sa bawat distribution utility uh, makakatulong po ito yung, yung ginagawa ng uh, Energy Regulatory Commission kasi yung Yung kontrata ng mga electric co-ops and distribution utilities sa mga generation companies for their supply ay, ay uh, malaking component ng ating uh, binabayaran. So, uh, supply side daw yan. And then, pangalawa, yung sa mga brownouts, ang brownouts ay, da ay maraming dahilan. Un uh, hindi lamang uh, dahil sa supply, ngunit yung, yung uh, transmission. Okay. Transmission wires uh, at uh, dahil doon uh, pinag uh, pinagtitibay namin yung yung coordination sa NGCP sa on grid areas at sa off grid areas with NPC. And then third do yung distribution utility or electric cooperative mismo. Na mm -hmm. at uh, dito uh, like sa sa uh, uh, mga areas na nagkaroon ng uh, bagyo nakikita namin yung yung pangangailangan na na uh, mapatibay yung kanilang uh, mga linya dahil po yung ibang linya natin ay napaka luma na at uh, hindi kaya na i, na sa bagyo na super typhoon hindi talaga ho Kaya. Kaya ang nangyari sa Nueva Ecija in particular ng uh, Typhoon Carding ay nag illustrate lamang na dapat ma ma mapatibay natin yung distribution, utility, wires as well. Okay. Doon na po yung sa distribution, Mr. Chair, kung matatamdang ko yung explanation sa akin uh, ng mga kooperatiba. Uh, yung mga luba na mga equipment nila, yung mga... Uh, uh, wires, tapos yung uh, transformers. Ngayon, uh, saan sila kukuha ng pambili niyan? So, utang sila. Pag utang sila, ito lang sa ERC. At sa ERC, napakatagal. ERC, umabot ng taon-taon na ata. Kupong-kupong. Uh, di ba? Uh, para uh, maaprobahan. So, siguro yung papasok, dapat magkaroon ng enough budget para ang isang kooperatiba para punuan po yung mga pangailangan para ma- uh, yung mga kaganit pero in a lot of cases wala silang ganon so yung kaya naisip ko po yung privatization again I'm not saying I'm 100% uh, agreeable doon sa ipaprivatize natin itong mga electric cooperative ang sinasabi ko aralan tingnan uh, kung uh, ano yung pros and cons kung mas makabubuti ba na ipaprivatize o stay put na lang tayo sa uh, kumbaga kung ano yung meron tayo ngayon the Latiguhin natin, latiguhin yung mga non-performing cooperative, electric cooperative for performance sila. Pagalitan, ERC nandiyan kayo, NEA, si Baki ng mga hindi marunong mag-manage ng mga electric cooperative, status ko lang muna. Alisin natin itong sakit sa ulo, Mr. Chair, na 
eh, wala man pala kayong pera, wala kayong mga kakayahan na para magpatakbo ng uh, electric cooperative. Then, i-benta nyo na lang yan at maging privatized na lang. Ganun na lang, kaysa naman sakit sa ulo na lang. Pinagbigyan na kayo for so many years, dekada na. Eh, tapos, yun pa rin yung sitwasyon. So, yun po yung sinasabi ko. So, anyway, uh, para may pasok ko sa iba, I know a lot of uh, my colleagues are still waiting. Uh, yun lang po sa akin, I, I'm, I'll be very supportive dun po sa inyong budget request. Kita nyo naman po, ERC, uh, ipinaglaban ko kayo. Pero dapat, kapalit yun, ipaglaban niyo po yung ating mga consumer. Gawin niyo po yung trabaho niyo. Just don't sit in your ass. I'm sorry for the word. Do something. The, the, the consumers are sick and tired of being sick and tired dito po sa mga brownout na nangyari. Talagang kung kayo po ay nasa sitwasyon ko, kung kayo po ay nasa radio station ko na tumatang, nagikinig po ng mga reklamo sa mga brownouts, sasakit ang ulo niyo at mahibad din po kayo. So, please do something. Tulad sabi ni Secretary Lutilia, lastly, uh, mag-usap-usap kayo. Uh, tingnan niyo kung paano niyo po matulungan isa't isa para ma-address yung problema once and for all. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Chair. Thank you.